On this first Sunday in Lent, our service will begin with the Great Litany. It's found on page 148 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 148 in the Book of Common Prayer. The congregation is invited to kneel as you are able. Thank you. 
God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations, and as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The congregation is invited to be seated. The readings are found as part of our bulletin. Terrifying display of power, his, and with signs and wonders, and he 
brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring you the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow before the Lord your God. <coughs> and then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate you. Celebrate with all about me that who reside among you shall celebrate. <laughs> Excuse me. You should celebrate it all about me that the Lord your God has given to you and your house. The word of We will read the song by Aphros. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. My God, in the time of my trials. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you. My charge over you, to keep you, you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you catch your children upon your own You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall try to the lion and turn to the Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him, because I am my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am in your trouble. I will rescue you and bring you to my heart. Your with long life will I satisfy him. And show you my salvation. A reading from Paul's letters to the church in Rome. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instance all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command the angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Each first Sunday in Lent, we visit with Jesus in the wilderness, with the devil, with temptations. Each of the writers brings something specific to their telling of this story. Well, except for John. John does it importantly by not having a temptation story. What would be the purpose? For John, Jesus is the word of God. There's no reason. Of course he will withstand any temptation. Matthew has Jesus being led up into the wilderness by the Spirit. I love how Mark has it. There's such immediacy, such power. The Spirit drives him out into the wilderness. And Luke, in his own way of telling this story, says that he was led by the Spirit while in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. For Luke, Luke understands something important in his telling of this story. Instead of it focusing upon the temptations, it focuses on the role of wilderness. For Luke, 
He is not, Jesus is not driven immediately, dripping wet out of the waters of the Jordan. Instead, Luke is going to insert a genealogy. We all love reading genealogies, don't we? But it fits into the story because it's exactly what happens in the telling of the story of Moses and the children of Israel before they go into the wilderness. Jesus, just like the children of Israel, are going to be led into their wilderness by a pillar of cloud by day and by the Spirit's fire at night. For Luke, it's not so much a story of temptation. It is a story of wilderness experience. I think as I have matured, I have had different thoughts about this passage. When younger, all I could see was temptation. Because I think that's the nature of maturity. As we are young, we are told there's things you just can't do. And so it becomes very enticing. I have to try it. Why don't they want me to do this? It seems like they're keeping good stuff away from us. And so we're tempted to do what we think is outside of the boundary. It's what the story in Genesis is all about, about Adam and Eve, of a fruit on a tree. It's a temptation in some way, something that is not allowed for us. We want to reach out and grasp it and try it ourselves. It is a temptation, and so we pluck the fruit. It's a true part of what we must experience as we live, as we mature, to understand that those things that we are directed away from are for our best. Our bodies can't handle some of the things until it's older. The experiences aren't able to be processed until we are older. And so boundaries are put around those things. But the temptation is always to pluck, to taste, to see for ourselves. And so often, when we fall into temptation, after we have plucked and tasted, we say, I realize why I shouldn't have done that. But that's not really the emphasis for Luke. We see the emphasis of the Spirit being with Jesus, leading and in the wilderness with Jesus. Just like that cloud in the day and the fire pillar at night, the children of Israel always have the presence of God with them, leading them in the midst of a wilderness. For Jesus, he too is being led by the Spirit in the wilderness. We'll see the fullness of that in the book of Acts when the Spirit comes to the church like a pillar of smoke and a sound and fire. It leads the church then into the world giving the good news of God. For Jesus, the Spirit is the presence of God with him as he is being led in the time of wilderness for 40 days. Just as the children of Israel were led for 40 years, so Jesus in his time period of 40 days, just like Moses up on the mountain, led or spent time there for 40 days, is in the presence of God in the midst of, uh, in the midst of wilderness. I think we who are more mature have had a little more life's experience under our belt who we understand that all those temptations, all of that low-hanging fruit is not always what it appears to be. We might understand Luke's story a little more for us. 
The wilderness is the experience that we go through that seems so fearful, so isolating, so dangerous, so frightening, and yet God is with us. I believe that's what Luke is trying to tell the church, that in the wilderness of life, God was with the children of Israel. God was with Jesus, and likewise, God is with those who follow the way of Christ. The Spirit is with Jesus, and the Spirit is with us. I love the imagery that Luke uses. It plays off of what is found in Mark as well as Matthew. Or, excuse me, in Matthew. Jesus is famished after not having eaten for 40 days. The image is about finding self-satisfying food. Looking out for himself. That is in the wilderness of life. In the isolation, we begin thinking about ourselves, and we forget about the world around us. Jesus instead steps back through the help of Scripture to understand that self-satisfaction, even in the most difficult times of life, is about the priority of understanding that God is the source of all. I think we sometimes try to control things, to manipulate things, to make sure things work out the way we need them to, a sort of self-satisfying of the events of life. We work and we manipulate. And yet Jesus says, to be able to keep God's priority in the times of need, of isolation, and even of times where we are deprived of what we need, we can still rely on God for the abundance that's needed, even when the scarcity of wilderness is frightening us. God is gracious. God will satisfy the needs that we need. The one who is tempting Jesus then takes him to that highest point, lets him see everything in an instant. It's interesting the way Luke writes his story. He shows him all of the glory and the authority around him and says, I own this and I can give it to you. The kingdoms of the world belong to the world. They follow their whims. They follow their values. Luke, as he writes this and has those words come out of the devil's mouth, they are words, if read in the original Greek, authority and glory are words that are tied to the Roman Empire. The world seems to have so much to offer, so much power, so much prestige, but they're temporary. And they are so thin. They are not God's loving grace and presence. Jesus looks at those things and sees them for what they are. They're the values of this world, the possessions of this world. They are the things that the world lives for. And Jesus says, no. I will live faithfully within the parameters of the faith. I will live for the eternal rather than the temporal. And finally, taken up to the highest point in the temple, jump off and the angels will catch you. We even read that as our psalm today. And sure enough, they will gather you up. You won't even bump your big toe. God's going to take care of you. But to live as if there are no consequences for action is often a temptation that we're called to. In the midst of the wilderness of life, we sometimes forget that there are things and consequences for the decisions that we make. We are called to live faithfully because those are the things that will last. 
Those are the things that will uphold us. Those are the things that will bring us to the promised land. We will see that the early church, led by the Spirit, will hold faithfully to what Jesus says to the powers of the world. He says no. He's crucified. But God has the last word in the resurrection. The followers, too, when faced with choice, will choose to follow that difficult path of Jesus himself, and they will be raised as well. I think through our years, we understand that the journey of life is often a wilderness. It's often a frightening place, a place of loneliness, a place of fear. Jesus shows us that God is with us in those times. That as we hold true to the things that pull us away from that truth, we find the depth of God alive in our situation. The angels will minister to Jesus. They will bring him what he needs and will support him through the difficult time. We are called as the people of God, as the church of God, even in the midst of wilderness, to trust God's presence and life with us. That God will bring us through and lead us to that place of promise, that holy land. We journey now in our 40 days of Lent, trusting that God will lead us through the wildernesses of our life to where we need to be. Amen. We stand together as we say the words of the Nicene Creed, the foundation of our faith that holds true even in times of wilderness. It's found on page number 326, and we say the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus. Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As part of our great litany, we have confessed, confessed our, our sins, we have prayed the prayers of the people, and so now, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. God's peace, God's peace, God's peace.
You are invited to be seated. <laughs> As we are journeying through our way in Lent, tomorrow we have our Monday ecumenical Lenten program. And so we begin at First United Methodist Church, 1215 at First United Methodist Church. Uh, the preacher for tomorrow is Deacon Greg Pear from Immaculate Conception. And we, each Monday we are at a different location, so um, uh, we'll keep you up and follow our bulletin, and so we'll be able to follow our list of the churches where we're at. I believe the Monday in spring break is when we'll be at St. John's and the retiring minister of Goddard Methodist Church, Pastor Kim Cloninger, will be the speaker here. Um, throughout the week, we'll have Wednesday. Our Eucharist will be at noon with anointing and healing prayers. We'll have our Wednesday evening class in the Skinner Building at 5 o'clock p.m., and then on Sundays, of course, 8 o'clock and 10.30 worship. In between at 9.15 is our adult education throughout this Lent, looking at the teaching and the theology of Reinhold Niebuhr. And pretty good class today, wasn't it? The, that was it. It was a good group. So they are invited to come and join in. They'll be caught up real quick, and then they'll be right in the flow, right? That's it. So we'll keep, we'll keep uh, going. So if you missed this week... Don't let that be in any way an encumbrance from coming next week, 9.15. Please do follow the rest of the bulletin uh, for the events that are coming up. We're slowly opening things up in the, the ministries uh, and the committees are beginning their work. Uh, so please do, each committee and each group is making the decisions uh, which is best for them as we begin to open up. So these are very exciting. This is a very exciting Lent. And remember, on Zoom, we have from 9.30 until 10, we have our Zoom Sunday School with Chip and Father Mike. Yes, on Zoom. If you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, you'd like to receive a blessing on that occasion, I invite you to gather with me at the altar rails. And our prayer is found on the inside cover of our prayer book. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be, keeping her unspotted from the world, strengthen her when she stands, comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful, raise her up if she falls. And in her heart may thy peace which passeth understanding Abide all the days of her life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I pray God's grace to bless you each and every day, especially on your birthday. Thank Let us offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High.
This first Sunday in Lent, we use Eucharistic Prayer 1. It's found on page 333. Page 333, Eucharistic Prayer 1. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby as one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that is precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
access is found on page 337. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving. body of Christ.
We pray together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving province through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, bless us all now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>
us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.